Hi everybody. Um, we just thought we'd shoot a little demonstration video on how to wire up the circulation fan um, for your mushroom fruiting chamber. Uh, so this is just about giving you confidence about how to select the right fan and adapt a combination so that you know it'll work fine. So these fans and adapters come in many different shapes and sizes and um, power. Uh, some are much more powerful than others. So it's important that you choose the right power adapter for the fan. So we've got a few power adapters here and a few fans and we'll show you how to match them up so that they work properly. So first up, if you look on any of these uh, fans, you'll see that they'll have some kind of rating on them. It's a little hard to read on this one, but under here it says 12 volts. There's a bit of printing over the top. And then this one says 0.27 amps. So one amp equals 1000 milliamps. So 0.27 amps equals 270 milliamps. If we take a look at this larger, physically larger fan here, even though it's larger, it's also a 12 volt DC um, computer fan or 12 volt DC brushless fan. Uh, but this one only draws 0.16 amps or 160 milliamps. Um, so this one, even though it's bigger than this one, it actually uses less power. It you probably moves a lot less air too. I'd say this one spins a lot faster. And then finally, uh, we have a third one here. And this third one is smaller again. It's the same as the small size one. Um, and it's also 12 volts DC. Uh, but it draws 0.92 amps. So 920 milliamps. So it's much more powerful. Um, it's uh, going to draw, well, that's about six times as much power and probably spin a lot faster than this one that only draws 160 milliamps. So let's, let's, let's use this one today and let's see if we can find a power adapter that'll work for it. Um, so here's a big, chunky old power adapter. Now we need one that is also has an output of 12 volts and it has that DC symbol, the line with the dots underneath it, not an AC symbol on the output side. That little squiggly line is the AC or alternating current. This line with the dots is DC or direct current. So this is a 12 volt direct current, 0.6 amp. So that makes it 600 milliamps. Wait a second. This fan draws 0.92 amps, 920 milliamps, and this can only supply 0.6 amps. So this power adapter just does not have, even though it's big and heavy, um, it doesn't have enough uh, of an output power to be able to drive this fan. Um, so we don't want to choose one that's too small like this, otherwise it might, um, it might literally burn out or not work properly. Uh, on the other side of that, you'll see the input information. It's 240 volts, AC, alternating current, and it alternates at 50 hertz or 50 times a second. So that's the Australian um, mains voltage. If you're in another part of the world, it might say 120 volts and 60 hertz or, or something different. Don't worry about that. If it's a, from a device that was designed to work in your country, it'll work fine for your uh, mains electrical connection. The important thing is the, the output is 12 volt DC or direct current, which is symbolized by the line with the dots over the top of it. So this power adapter um, is just not powerful enough for that fan. Uh, so we put that one aside, it's not going to be any use. Let's have a look at this one. So this one, on the other hand, quite small writing, hope you can see that okay. This one says it's 12 volt and it's also DC, it's the line with the dots underneath it. And it says it's one amp. So that's 1000 milliamps, one amp. And remember our fan only required 0.92 of an amp. So this one can provide enough power, even though it's much smaller. It's a modern switch mode power supply. Now in your country, you may have different plugs on the end of it. Don't worry about that. As long as it works for your mains power and can plug into your main power, that's fine. Now, before we do any work on this, make sure this is unplugged from the mains power. We are working with very low voltage, very low power devices. Um, 
In Australia, for example, our mains power can put out 240 volts at 10 amps. So that's 2,400 watts of power. This one only outputs 1 amp at 12 volt. So 12 times 1 is 12 watts of power. So that's why it's safe and legal for people to do wiring at low voltage like this, because the total amount of energy that it can put out is 1 20th of the amount of energy that the, uh, the mains power supply can actually output. So it's quite safe to uh, play with the wiring of this. Nonetheless, you do want to unplug it from the power supply uh, so that you don't uh, short out the positive and negative wires and create a, a situation where the wires could heat up or you might break the, the, the transform or the plug pack. So the first thing you're going to need to do once you've um, unplugged your power supply unit uh, is you're going to need to cut these wires off. Um, so you can use a proper pair of wire cutters if you've got them um, or you can just use a pair of, of scissors if you like. Don't use your best um, sewing scissors or, or anything of really high quality, just a cheap pair of scissors like that will work fine. And we want to cut this off as close to the plug as possible so we have as much wire left over to be able to run our, our fan a longer distance from our mains power as possible. So cut it right up close um, to the plug and just snip it off. Um, and now uh, we're just going to spread these two wires apart a little bit. Now, usually you can just do those with your fingers like that and strip them back away. So we've got a little bit of freedom to work with the two individual wires. Now, when we're working with DC um, power, uh, usually the wires have an indicator of some kind to tell which one is positive and which one is negative. So in this case, we've got one black wire and one black wire with a white stripe. So the one with the white stripe will be the positive. Um, the one without um, any markings at all will be the negative. Sometimes they might be like this fan and one might be red and one might be black, in which case um, the black is the negative and the red is the positive. So as long as we put same to same, in this case, uh, black to black and the positive, the red positive to the white positive, uh, this will work fine. So the next thing we need to do is strip our wires back so we've got some copper wires to join. Now you can get all kinds of really high quality um, wire strippers that do a really neat job of stripping the wire. Um, so here are some decent quality little wire strippers. They have little cutouts for the different size um, pieces of wire. Uh, so you know these are a $10, $15 tool. Um, nothing too expensive. Uh, you can you want to cut off about about a half an inch, about a centimeter or so of wire. You just choose the right size um, jaws there and squeeze, and then strip it off. Now in this case, this wire is silver, silver wire. Um, sometimes it's copper. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to do the same on both of them. Well, actually, I'll show you, if you haven't got a pair of these pliers, another option is just to use those trusty scissors again. Um, this is a little bit trickier, and you have to be careful because you don't want to nick the wire. You don't want to create a little uh, indentation on the wire. But just place it down in, right down in the bottom of the wire, of the um, jaws of your scissors, and just squeeze down gently, and while... Well, Opening and closing the wires, the jaws of the scissors just a little, you should be able to score all the way around. You can see that? I've just scored all the way around. You don't even need to cut all the way through the plastic. You just need to score all the way around. And then it'll just pull off. And you want to make sure that that wire hasn't been damaged and there's no loose wires there. And it's quite easy to do just with a a pair of normal everyday scissors like that. So once we've bared those wires, we just want to do the same thing on the, the fan. So once again, I'm just going to do about half an inch or a bit over a centimeter. And I'm just working my way around Gently making sure, and then 
usually you can just bend the wire over like that and see whether you can see through the insulation even though it might not be cut all the way through that's enough for me to just use my fingernails to tear off that insulation it might take a bit of practice if you get it wrong don't worry just cut the cut the um, damaged wire off and go back and try it again uh, this is why we want to have as much wire as possible your fan might already have a plug on it of some kind too but it's unlikely to fit the same plug as the oh you can go through quite enough there oh there we go um, it's unlikely to be the same plug as the one that you've got on your uh, DC adapter. So, there we go. We've got our wires from our fan nice and bared, and we've got our wires from our plug pack nice and bared. So, now you've got lots of different options on how you can join these two together. Uh, at its most basic, we could just wire the plug pack directly to the fan, and to turn the fan on and off, we are going to rely on the switch on the wall, or we're going to plug in or unplug the power pack from the wall. Um, so for your scenario with your fruiting chamber, that might be all you need to do. Um, uh, so in this case, we just need to wire the, the two uh, the two pairs of wires together and join them. Now, you may already have something around your home to be able to do that. These, for example, are uh, crimping uh, butt connectors where we just slide the wires in and then use a uh, usually a special pair of crimping pliers but you can just use the pliers on the end here to crush that um, that connector down onto the wires and that will join the two wires together um, you can also get these fancy uh, little um, heat shrink with solder connectors so in this case we would slide the wires through so here's the, the positive wire from the power supply. We'd slide that through until it went through the solder in the middle of that unit. And then we'd do the same to the, sorry, that was the negative wire, the black wire. We'd do the same with the negative wire from the fan and we'd make sure that they're well connected like that and then these are designed to be heat, heated with a blowtorch or you can just use a cigarette lighter um, I'm not going to do this directly under the camera because it might damage my camera um, so uh, you could just heat it with a cigarette lighter until that solder melts and it will fuse those wires together um, and then you can use the cigarette lighter or a blowtorch or a little hot air torch to melt the um, the heat shrink. It shrinks down around the wire and gives you a really nice waterproof seal. You can get these kind of connectors from electrical supply stores and the like. Um, they're not very expensive um, to get a, a little collection like this. Um, but today, let's assume that you've just got what things that you might have uh, from a normal hardware store or lying around a house. Um, so we're going to join these together just by twisting them together. And for this kind of application, that's that's actually fine. So um, the best way to do that is to start with them just fanned out a little bit like this. And here's the other one fanned out a little bit as well. And we're just going to place them together like that, interlock them a little bit, and then using our fingers we're just going to twist and twist and twist until they're all nice and tight. Now, that's not going to handle much mechanical force. You don't want to pull that apart too much. Um, and at the moment, of course, those wires are exposed. So we could end up with a situation where if the power was connected, they would short out and that could create a spark and it might damage your power supply unit. Um, so that's not a great great idea. So we want to insulate that. And probably the easiest way to insulate uh, is with just a little bit of electrical insulation tape like this, or electrical tape. Um, and all we need to do is just wrap that around. I'm going to do a pretty quick rush job. And then you know, use your scissors if you want to be neat. And 
and there, that's all done. If I had some black tape, I would have used black tape there. This doesn't provide much insulation in terms of water resistance or whatever, but at least it does uh, protect the two from banging together. So that's the negative side, the black to the black connected. Now we need to connect the positive side. So the red to the white stripe. So same deal, we just fan these out a little bit. And with this one. And put them together. Give them a good twist. This is probably the, the least complex and least reliable way of joining them together, um, but uh, electrically it should work fine. And like I said, because this is all very low voltage wiring, it really is quite safe to do. You would never do something like this with mains uh, voltage wiring. Okay, so there we are. We've got our black connected to our black, and we've got our black with white stripe connected to our red. So there we go. That's now ready for us to plug in and test. Now another thing you should take notice of too is um, usually on a set of on a fan like this, it'll have some kind of arrows to indicate the direction of air movement and the direction that the fan spins. So in this case, um, this arrow uh, perpendicular to the radio, the axle of the fan, or parallel with the axis of the fan actually, um, indicates that the air will go this way. Um, and this arrow indicates that the fan will spin that way to scoop the air through and push it that way. So um, one thing to be aware of is when you first plug it in, we want to double check that that's the result that we're getting. Um, we want to check that when we get power to it, the air is being pushed this way. If it's not, if it's the reverse, if it's pushing air this way, then we've got our wiring back to front for some reason, in which case you'll have to do that again the other way. So let's take a look now. I'm going to plug this in to my power board over here. So I can feel that this is blowing quite hard in that direction. Excellent. So that's it. That's how you wire up a simple computer fan to a plug adapter and allow you to plug it directly into the power supply. Now, this fan is very, very powerful. And it's actually uh, it's too powerful. It makes too much noise. It draws too much uh, power. Um, so in this case, if I had this fan, I would want to slow it down quite a bit if I was going to use it as a circulation fan in uh, my fruiting chamber. Uh, so to do that, we will have to add a speed controller in line uh, in here instead. So here I've got one um, that I bought from an electrical supply place. Um, it was about uh, $30, I think. It's, so it's not an incredibly cheap one. Um, and this is something that may be a little hard to get. Uh, so you may be better off using a much less powerful fan. The fans usually we can get for free scrounging out of, out of old computer equipment and the like. Um, same with the, the power adapters. They're usually free too. Uh, so you're probably better off looking around for free ones of these rather than the, um, having to get using a, a very powerful one and having to get a speed controller like this. So um, all we need to do to wire that in place is very similar to what we just did before. First, I'll just remove the wire. Remove the insulation, sorry, from this wire. Oh, 
Okay. So we're going to disconnect these wires again. We're just going to twist in the reverse direction. So that's one nice thing about using this kind of connection is it's not permanent. It's easy enough for you to undo without having to re-strip the wires. Okay. So now our speed controller. This particular speed controller has um, a, an input side and an output side. So this is the side we're going to connect to the power supply unit. And then this is the side we're going to connect to our fan. Um, you can see it's a 12 volt, 8 amp. So you can do 8,000 milliamps. So that's way more than either of these other devices can um, uh, need. That's its output. Um, it'll run on much lower voltage, uh, much lower um, power than that. It doesn't actually require very much power at all to run the unit. Um, and it's DC PWM, which means pulse width modulated controller. Um, don't worry about that too much. Um, it works fine for a load current, that's the fan side, of up to 8 amps. So that's huge. And it can be adjusted from 0 to 100%. So no speed at all, off, up to fully on 100% power. So let's uh, wire this one up and see how it goes. Same as before. We're going to start with the black to the black. And the red to the positive, the red to the white stripe on the uh, transformer, which is also the positive. And we'll get a little bit of tape. And then we're going to take the output of the speed controller and connect it to the fan. So in this case, um, the, the red to the red again, the positive to the positive. So it actually indicates there that V positive is voltage positive and V negative is voltage negative. And in this case, the negative on the here is white, uh, connecting to the negative of the power supply, which is black, which can be a little confusing, but you'll be all right. Same deal, just going to insulate those. And of course, you could use your other options for joining these together, um, the heat shrink uh, solder connection or the, um, the crimp on butt connectors like this. Uh, but today, we're just wiring them all together using just twisting them together and insulating them with insulation tape. Okay, so um, now we have our speed controller connected to our power supply unit and connected to our fan. So let's give it a test. Um, again, it'll blow in that direction. Um, we'll plug it in and this time nothing happens. And that's just because we've got this turned all the way down. But um, if we put this on here to show. All the way up to the speed that we had before, or all the way down to nothing. If you hear it making a noise like that, that's a good indicator that you need to turn the speed up a little bit. Um, it might actually uh, stall and then you might burn out your fan. Um, so. That's much better, much quieter. Remember, so this is at about half, half speed. And compare that to the noise for when we've got it at full speed. So that's much more um, acceptable as a, a noise level in our fruiting chamber and uh, won't blow things around too much. So that's it. That's how you connect a DC power, a DC brushless computer fan to a, a plug pack, a transformer like this, and 
uh, if you need to, how you fit a speed controller in between. See you in the course.